Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Writer's Bookshelf. Uh, we are beginning season three today, so congratulations for coming back and for checking out the latest book that we're going to cover to help you become a better writer and enjoy the process of writing a little bit more. So today's book is uh, going to be another one of our starter books where if you are not sure how to get into writing or how to make it worth your while, uh, this is the kind of book that will help you get there and will get you in the right mental space. And that book here is The Writer's Guide to Persistence by Jordan Rosenfeld. And um, if, you know, if you remember our last season with um, a book called Writing Deep Scenes, I remember that it was a, a book written by uh, co-authors. Martha Alderson was one, Jordan, Jordan Rosenfeld was the other. Um, so this is one of her solo books, and her purpose here is to help writers get into the mindset of being successful and that means you know getting started and finishing the work and of course how to take criticism once uh, they've actually produced something so this entire book is really about getting writers onto that uh, mental journey of um, ultimately finishing it uh, and the reason why this is important is a lot of us um, kind of don't want to start the book because it's hard uh, you know we think we're inferior we don't think we're capable of doing a good job with what we're faced with and it doesn't matter how long we've done it, we always have that uh, nervous moment where we think we're wasting our time or wasting the reader's time. Um, you know, and, and especially for pursuing traditional publishing where uh, we feel like we're wasting the agents and publishers' time. So uh, this is one of the books where you probably want to start each of your uh, writing journeys uh, just to get into the right frame of mind so that when you do begin that you're not going to quit. And if you do have that propensity to want to quit, then this is the kind of book that will talk you out of it. And it will give you some good practice on how to do that. So let's take a quick look at it. Um, obviously, again, you, know, you get the cover here. This, by the way, is a pretty popular book with readers. Um, if you go to Barnes & Noble or even Amazon, you're going to find that it's pretty consistently high rated. Um, it is, um, of all the books I've ever gone through reviewed, I've had a hard time finding a bad review on this one. So you may want to consider that uh, when you're looking into it. But let's take a quick look at how it is. You've got three sections here with the table of contents. You've got um, practice, you got polish, and then you've got persist, or the three topics. And with practice, essentially what you're doing is you're actually setting up your workspace, um, your mindset. Um, chapters include loving the journey, which is when you are basically, you gotta make sure that it's not just about the end product, it's about the journey getting to the end product. You gotta make sure that it's something that you want to do. Uh, then this create a practice where you're going to actually set up your kind of space to make sure that you're um, willing to continue with with the, the work so um, i'll show you an example of what a chapter looks like here here's create a practice here um, so basically you're trying to set up a um, you're, you're setting up a, a, a premise for yourself in order to commit to the work when you are um, when you are doing the practice and also you want to make sure that you know you're being honest with what you're willing to you know accomplish for the ending there um and then you got the next chapter is going to be waking your authenticity authenticity so uh, at this point you're just you want to make sure that you know who you are uh why you're the one the right person for this particular book and um, obviously you want to make sure that you Again, believe that you are the, uh, not only the right person to do it, but you can do it. Um, and this means also, you know, having some of those skills, um, having that the the um, experience, uh, um, vulnerability, and all that, and uh, just willing to just again show that you have the right to write the book you're going to write, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. Okay taking the time so this means you are this is chapter four this means that you are willing to um, to make sure that you have the proper um, schedule in order to write so this is something that a lot of people find difficulty with because um, you know I mean we all have lives you know writing for most people is not the, their first job usually it's the thing that they cram in between um, business meetings or feeding children or trying to sleep you know it's, it's most writers can't afford to make this their first job so they you know making the time means you know finding those moments in between other important tasks in order to do it and so that also includes having an organization 
and also having um, charts, things that you can follow along in order to you know check your uh, your progress and things. Um, you know, and there's just other little factors too. And then um, you know, finding the balance and being productive, and you know, it just it continues to go on um, through just some of the simple uh, reminders of how we need to set up our situation. Okay. Uh, and then we have like building boundaries. This is important for most people. This is also important for those who aren't writers who don't understand that writers need you know space and um, they need to be in a distraction-free zone. Um, this is the kind of thing where if you live with another person and if you have not established a clear boundary on you know the time that they're allowed to talk to you, um, you know whether or not they're allowed to just come in without knock knocking or anything like that. Um, you know, what's considered important, what's considered um, reasonable to interrupt. Uh, for example, you know, if, um, you know, if, if there's an intruder in the house, you probably need to, you know, take a break from your writing to deal with that. Um, but for the most part, you know, the, um, you know, the, the, that really cool uh, thing on TV can probably wait till later. So um, these are just some examples on how to get started. And of course, each section is going to cover different important points. Um, with polish, it's going to focus on what is actually um, what you need to do with your work once you. Um, um, I'm sorry, my air conditioner is. Back now. Give me one second. So with polish, you know, the, this is where you're going into the area where you've actually started the writing process. You've talked yourself into it. Which is an important thing to do but you now you're going to convince yourself that you can do it and you're going to do it and you're in the middle of doing it but there's sometimes there's a point where for whatever reason you get derailed maybe you um you need to uh you've taken a break from it and you need to come back and then um, work on it again but maybe by doing so you're not feeling quite as inspired as you were originally so part of persistence is getting into the mindset of like well i need to get back into that frame of mind that I first started with so that I can continue not only the journey but wanting to do it. Um, and there's also elements where maybe you need to you know take the advantage of the time while writing to improve your skill. Um, do like what I do where I have my certain um, areas where I just I never feel like I improve like um, dealing with like character expressions a good one for me. Um, you know so one thing I like to try to do is you know, remind myself not only that I need to find different ways to show expression but if, if necessary maybe even do like a side project where I focus only on character expressions just so I can get past that uh, that limitation and continue on in the work so practicing new skills is a, is a method that you might encounter when reading this and then just other little things like that where uh, it inspires you to pick up not only where you left off but to improve your writing as you go um, because at the end of the day uh, you know we can uh, have different ideas for how we want to improve our work <laughs> I'm watching the backdrop peel um welcome to the wonderful world of making videos for youtube um first my air conditioner went da, 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 and now i got my backdrop this is uh this is what happens when you don't have a professional studio and your budget is so limited that you basically have to string together um you know whatever curtains you can and it's just don't get into YouTube creation, guys. You know, stick to writing; it's easier. Um, but anyway, yeah. So when you uh, put together your, um, your your book, your ideas for your book, you know, obviously, you know, you want to, um, you just learn how to stay within the mindset that you're going to finish what you're doing. So um, that's some, what uh, the polish section mainly about. And then finally, you've got the. Um, See, sorry, the the it was the revision. I think was the third one. Um, no, per, persist. Sorry. Um, with persist, is basically what happens after you've done the writing and now you want to show it off to people. Um, it starts going through the practices of what you do with critiques, with criticism, uh, with your own self sabotage, and anything that would prevent you from wanting to finish the work or or even submit it. Um, so it's about believing uh, that what you have is worth sharing uh, or coming up with the reasons why maybe you need to fix it. So uh, these are some areas in which, uh, again, the book is useful in getting your mindset in the right place. 
So um, the other thing is when you go through each section, every chapter has um, something called move it and work it. Okay, and I'll just show you an example of that. Um, so work it here. This is going to be one of the things you're going to do to practice the skill you've learned. Um, so an example under um, go where you are welcome, which I believe is still part of the first part, I believe. Um, in this particular case, it tells you, I highly recommend you start a synchronicity notebook. You may call it whatever you wish, grand coincidences, goals that come to pass. doesn't matter how you frame it. Each day, record a noteworthy events pertaining your, or record noteworthy events pertaining to your writing practice and goals. It could be something like, I picked up two books in a row today, the bookstore that shared the same name as my protagonist, or as I was working on an essay about my mother's death, I had this funny feeling to look through that box of old photos I've never opened. There I found a tiny diary she left behind that I never noticed or read before. Uh, the more you track these events and situations, the stronger your lens will become to look for uh, signs that you're moving in the right direction and the more likely you'll feel motivated rather than discouraged. So that's one example of um, the work. And then move it is gonna be, what I find one of the more important parts of the book and something that I'm a little surprised that most books don't do. Uh, but it's certainly useful here is that with move it what you're actually doing is you're uh, going through uh, methods for um, for actually keeping yourself exercising motivated and um, you know ke keeping yourself healthy essentially and well that's important because writing is a job that um, if you don't keep yourself healthy you're not gonna be able to keep up with it you know one of the things that people worry about is when you know sick writers you know have a series um you know you want to make sure that you're um <laughs> healthy enough to finish your work you know to want to finish it so that's uh, an example of um of move it and all that so but um anyway well uh, let me pause real quick so now i just paused the video and i moved it to my backdrop to fix it because it was getting distracting so hopefully everything works fine now um Again, this is uh, one of the joys of having real-time video. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have an office at some point that I can just have a normal backdrop with a normal bookshelf and show you off all my books that I'm gonna uh, show you guys over time. But anyway, it is what it is. You know, welcome to the Writer's Bookshelf. We're back, season three. Uh, but yeah, that's um, again, Writer's Guide to Persistence by Jordan Rosenfeld. Sorry, I'm trying to not hide your name there. Um, it's one of those, again, a book that is very highly rated among uh, many readers, many authors who really just want to not only be inspired, but they want to finish the work they've started. And if you do have trouble getting started or finishing, uh, then this might be a book worth looking into. Um, I do recommend it. Um, you know, again, if you have a, a practice that you're used to and you don't necessarily want to change that, the book may not be for you. Um, you know, again, I usually like to start each season with something inspirational or something uh, to remind you, you know, what's at stake with writing because, you know, we do ultimately need to break back into the craft and break it back into the reminders of how to do this. And if we're not into it, if like, if our mood is shattered for any reason, then we're not going to do the work. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to finish up what we've set out to do. Might not even start what we've set out to do. And so we always want to tackle that first obstacle, which is that, you know, the block that we um, that often keeps us from getting anything done. And, and, you know, it's a pretty short book. I mean, it's you can read it probably in a weekend. It's uh, just over 200 pages, um, which is like the bare minimum for printed books that you get on the shelf. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think overall it's it'll be worth your time to look into it if that is something that you feel like you need in order to be inspired. So anyway. Um, as far as the season goes, uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but my focus this year or this you know particular block of books is going to be for genre writing. But the genre writing books are going to come a little later because, I mean, I do have a few more crap books that I didn't talk about in the earlier seasons that I do want to get through on um, this particular season. So do bear in mind that we will have a few of those coming up. Um, the next week that we have... Uh, and bear and the other thing too is i'm going to be doing videos a little out of sequence from what i usually do because i just want to get them done so um i may be doing some episodes out of order from when they go live so if something seems weird like i've talked about something that um, hasn't aired yet um as if you've already seen it 
just again bear with me because you know there will be certain books that will be probably go live you know months after i've recorded them even though i just i, I just want to get them up and running while I'm, it's still fresh in my mind so um do be aware of that but i i think that there's going to probably be maybe i want to say eight to ten craft books that are um on the backlog now maybe not that many but another nevertheless important books but then we will get into some genre focused books and then um whether it'll be this season or the or maybe like a part two this season i want to get into some um uh encyclopedia type books where they're helpful for certain types of writers uh so anyway it should be an interesting season definitely uh, different from the last two uh, i hope just as useful so that's what you have coming up along the way uh, but do thank you for uh, for watching and for uh, sticking with the series so far. If you're unfamiliar with Writer's Bookshelf, again, this is a series where um, I really just I talk about the books that I've got on my bookshelf and talk to you about why it's worth reading or why you should have it on your own shelf or uh, at the very least give you something to think about uh, for whether or not you do want it on your shelf and whether you do want to invest in reading it and you have time and money and all that. So um, I do think that if you are serious about writing it's worth it to go back to some of the earlier episodes to see if there's a book there that you might benefit from um again we've already gone through two full seasons and this is the beginning of three and i know there's gonna be at least one or two more after this so um there's still plenty more to go through uh my advice to you is i do release these um every friday at 10 um during the regular season and then i do bonuses once a month at the start of each month on fridays um, if you're the kind of reader who gets bogged down, then obviously take your time going through it. Um, I do a recap at the end of each season, so you can always use our recaps also if you need to. But um, but I will be releasing at least one a week, so you can certainly have um, uh, a backlog to work with as you work throughout your journey. And remember that no book is good unless you practice it. So if you find something that you... Uh, that you find pretty valuable i mean practice what it shows you so that you can get better at that crap because i always say it's not about the practice it's about good practice you know if you um if you do nothing but practice bad habits you're only going to sow bad results so practice the good habits and these books will teach you the good habits and um a lot of them are divergent from each other because there's different teaching styles but you'll find hopefully you'll find one that meshes well with your own learning style and, and all that so that's something i would add extra um that this book doesn't necessarily talk about but the purpose of the series is to help you guys find uh the path that works best for you so you can actually not only learn how to write but learn how to write gracefully and with joy and produce works that people want to read and um i'm gonna end with one more um thing is that you can get overwhelmed um if you to take too many of these so i would say if at a, you reach a point where you think you've got all you need go ahead and take a rest and, and just practice what you've done learn because um you know we don't want to be in the paralysis of learning so much that we do nothing so keep that in mind anyway that's it for today thank you for watching and we'll be back next week with another book um and we'll figure out what that is when we get there so again i'm going to be doing these out of order so I couldn't be sure I know which one is going to definitely come, but I'm pretty sure I know which one it'll be. And it'll be one kind of unlike what we've done so far. It should be interesting. It's one I actually just picked up uh, a couple weeks ago um, on a whim. Didn't know it existed, but I found it and thought, hey, this will be good for the series. So and it's in the, it'll be in the right kind of position. So that should be fun. So anyway, come back next week and the next book and uh, take notes because we all love notes, right? All right, that's it. Take care and uh, see you next time. Bye.